Hi everyone, welcome to Vedantu J English. I'm Diksha Kaushal, your chemistry master teacher. And as you requested, today we are going to do and we are going to revise physical chemistry formulas for your board exams. Okay, so everybody, let us start the video. Starting off with solutions first. So for solutions, we have some concentration terms. That is mole fraction. Firstly, we have mole fraction. Mole fraction is like if you want to calculate the mole fraction of first component, the number of moles of first component divided by the total number of moles of all the components present in that mixture. Okay, and the mole fraction of all the components is equals to unity. Next, we have molarity. That is number of moles of solute divided by volume of solution. That is in Liters. Here units are very important. This is in liters and molality. We have mass of solvent that is in kilograms. Next we have Henry's law where P is equals to KH and mole fraction where P is the partial pressure and KH is the Henry's constant. Next we have the colligative properties. Very, very, very important. The questions are usually asked from colligative properties and want of factor. So we have four colligative properties. First starting with relative lowering in vapor pressure. Always remember in my all the formulas I will denote second to two is uh, two is equals to solute and one is equivalent to solvent if I am denoting something two that means I am talking about solute and with one I am talking about solvent so here we are going to say this is the relative lowering in vapor pressure but P naught minus P is the lowering in vapor pressure where P is the partial pressure and P naught is the pure so pure vapor pressure okay pure vapor pressure and P is the partial vapor pressure so this is relative lowering and this is is the lowering in vapor pressure that is equals to mole fraction of sol uh, solute okay this represents solute next we have elevation and boiling point the boiling point is increased after adding some solute here so delta tb is equals to tb minus tb naught is equals to kbm where kb is the molar elevation constant okay so here the units the units for kb are also mentioned here that can also be asked where m is the molality always remember with relative lowering in vapor pressure we have that is equals to mole fraction and here we have molality in depression in freezing point also the formula is very similar it's just that here we have tf naught minus tf because here we have depression the boil the temperature is uh, getting down the freezing point is lowering okay there is depression in the freezing point and this is equals to this is also molality but in case of osmotic pressure always remember this in case of osmotic pressure that is dependent on the molarity not the molality first first we have mole fraction then molality here also molality here we have molarity this is pi pi denotes osmotic pressure is equals to CRT where C is equals to molarity okay so molarity is what number of moles of solute divided by volume of solution in liters next we have Next is if we want to calculate this, if there is any dissociation or association, so there will be want hoff factor. So just uh, apply the want hoff factor in all the formulas. Just I will be here, I will be here, here also I will be here. And then I is added here also, I is added in all the colligative properties. In all the colligative properties, because of association and dissociation, there will be some change. Next we have Raoult's law. For Raoult's law, this is the partial vapor pressure. This is the vapor pressure in pure your state okay denoted by not this is the mole fraction right if something obeys Raoult's law that is called ideal solution if do not obey Raoult's law this is called non-ideal solution okay we have positive negative deviations and you need to remember all the examples of positive and negative deviation as well next we have want of factor for want of factor the I is equals to observed colligative property divided by calculated colligative property that is also equals to number of particles after association or dissociation divided by number Number of particles before that okay initially then we have normal molecular mass divided by observed molecular mass here you will calculate the i and put in the colligative properties so also how to if, if there is dissociation then colligative property is related to degree of dissociation with this formula and the the want of factor is always greater than one for dissociation and want of factor is always less than one for association here it is related to degree of dissociation with this formula right okay so now 
नेक्स्ट वी हैव इलेक्ट्रोकेमिस्ट्री वेरी 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 इंपॉर्टेंट एंड वेरी स्कोरिंग चैप्टर वेरी स्कोरिंग चैप्टर सो लेट अस अंडरस्टैंड द फॉर्मूलाज दिस इज फ्यू फॉर्मूलाज बट वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट फॉर्मूला स्पेशली नर्स इक्वेशन सो लेट अस सी दिस इज अ नोट दिस इज केथोड दिस इज अ रिप्रेजेंटेशन ऑफ सेल हियर एट अ नोट देयर विल बी ऑक्सीडेशन एट केथोड देयर विल बी रिडक्शन दैट मींस हियर वी हैव लॉस ऑफ इलेक्ट्रॉन हियर वी विल हैव गेन ऑफ इलेक्ट्रॉन रिप्रेजेंटेड बाय दिस दिस इज द सॉल्ट ब्रिज हियर नेक्स्ट वी हैव हाउ टू कैलकुलेट ई सेल how to calculate e cell that is equals to e cathode minus e anode that's will be uh, that means cathode is on the uh, it is on the right side so that will be e e right side that minus e of left side you can also calculate this e right minus left you can also see it like this cathode minus anode but always take the reduction potential never oxidation potential is taken here always take the reduction potential in both the cases right next we have how they are related to each other so standard reduction potential is directly proportional to oxidizing power and it is inversely proportional to reducing power next we have nernst equation for nernst equation this is the formula where it is e in e cell is related to e not cell with this formula where log here is here on the above we have oxidation and down we have reduction okay the thing that is getting oxidized and thing that is getting reduced okay next we have we have standard condition temperature is standard right for that and a log is log is base to 10 this is the natural log this is log base to 10 for that this will be the formula that is 0.0591 just always remember these two formulas because if you're not given the particular temperature standard temperature then you will apply this formula if you are given the standard temperature or you're not given anything that means you are have you have standard temperature only then you will apply this formula okay where r is the gas constant next we have at equilibrium e is equals to 0 and delta g is equals to 0 so the formula becomes this put these value here and the formulas becomes like this okay now these This, this this whole chart is very important. The question are asked from this. Next we have Gibbs free energy that is related to delta G is equals to minus n f e cell where f is the one Faraday that is n nine six five zero zero and this is the relation between delta G and delta G not not means the standard conditions. Okay, here spontaneous reaction is where e cell is always greater than uh, that is positive greater than zero and delta G is uh, negative that is less than zero for non spontaneous. E cell is less than zero and delta G is positive. That is greater than zero. Next we have this formula again, but let us see this. So these are related to conductance and resistance, resistivity. Very important. So see this. This is the R represents here. Just firstly see what the simple what this represents. R represents resistance. Rho represents resistivity. C represents conductance and kappa. This is really this is called kappa. Kappa represents conductivity. So these are the units of these uh, uh, these uh, particular terms, right? Next we have. सेल कॉन्स्टेंट दैट इज रिप्रेजेंटेड बाई जी स्टार एंड दैट इज एल बाई ए यूनिट्स कैन बी पर सेंटीमीटर और पर मीटर एंड द आर इज रिलेटेड टू रिजिस्टिविटी इन दिस केस दिस इज कंडक्टेंस इज रिलेटेड टू दिस कंडक्टिविटी इन दिस केस ओके सो दीज फॉर्मूलाज आर वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट नेक्स्ट वी हैव मोलर कंडक्टिविटी Now this kappa represents the simple conductivity, but if we want to calculate the molar conductivity or equivalent conductivity for that the formula is molar conductivity is equals to kappa into thousand divided by molarity. If kappa is in centimeter is in uh, Simon centimeter inverse, this would be Simon centimeter inverse. If it is in Simon meter inverse, the thousand will not be here. Okay. Similarly with uh, molar uh, equivalent conductivity that is kappa into thousand divided by normality. Usually molar conductivity. Is asked. Okay, so now next we have next we have the infinite dilution. At infinite dilution, that is limiting molar conductivity. That is related. If we want to calculate, they will ask you. Was it? They will ask you to calculate this thing. Then they will ask you to calculate the degree of dissociation. Degree of dissociation is molar conductivity at a concentration C divided by molar conductivity at infinite dilution. That is limiting molar conductivity. And from there you will calculate the KC. That is uh, degree of dissociation. Degree uh, uh, dissociation constant. Okay. So dissociation constant is equal to C alpha square one minus alpha. Okay, guys. So this is also asked. They will ask you firstly this. Then this. They will take you this. Okay. This delta. This. For 
for calculating the molar conductivity at infinite dilution there are two three things that we can do okay for that we have Colosh law for this Colosh law we have this uh, this simply says that if you have a, uh, a uh, if you have a, an ionic compound in that compound this n this uh, uh, this uh, particular things they represent the that molar conductivity at infinite dilution will be equals to the molar conductivity of individual ions okay these are the molar conductivity of individual ions limiting molar conductivity of cation limiting molar conductivity of anion what is this n what is this n this represents the number of cations and the number of anions that they are being dissociated into very important firstly they will let you calculate this molar conductivity and in infinite dilution from this law then uh, molar conductivity at c concentration from this one and after that you have to calculate the degree of dissociation then uh, dissociation constant okay next we have faraday's law faraday's law, we have two laws that is first law second law this this can also be as usually students avoid this but this can also be as very simple so firstly this is w w is the weight the mass or the weight deposited right z is the electrochemical equivalent i is current and t is time and z is equals to e by f and e is equals to molar mass by n so the, the formula becomes m i t n f where m is the molar mass f is the faraday that is n 96500 n is the number of electrons that are gain or lost and i is the current t is the time in seconds okay so now second law says that if we have so many things that are connected in series for that weight of metal at a divided by weight of metal at b will be equals to equivalent weight at a equivalent weight at b okay so now next we have chemical kinetics very most simple chapter of physical chemistry very easy chapter of physical chemistry then we have reactants and products here you have two three things that students usually get confused in let me uh, let me teach you that so firstly this is the average that is equals to minus minus means that is getting disappeared okay so the reactant is getting disappeared minus is for that and the product is getting formed the plus is for because it is getting uh, formed here it is not getting disappeared okay this is the rate of appearance this is disappearance so this is delta delta represents a large change and d represents a very very small so, so this is r instantaneous r means rate at instantaneous okay so this is dr by dt this is delta r by delta t this is delta p by delta t this is dp by dt because this is a small change this is a large change okay next we have next we have rate of this is not a very large change as comparative to d this is a large change okay rate of reaction what is the rate of reaction what is this ma'am let me uh, let me teach you this also so if you have this particular reaction there are two things okay they will ask you two three things first they will ask you rate of appearance rate of appearance means that is getting appeared so this is getting appeared here this should be positive wait 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 this should be positive here this should be positive here okay because it is getting appeared no so appearance means it is positive disappearance means that should be negative so here it will be negative here right so rate of appearance for calculating the rate of appearance or disappearance you need not divide that with the any moles okay here i have not divided that with 1 by a or 1 by b okay but if you are calculating rate of reaction rate of reaction is always calculated for one mole so because of that you will also say rate of reaction will be equal to this is for appearance and this is for disappearance this is for disappearance so a uh, rate of appearance rate of disappearance and also write the number of moles that's why i have written rate of reaction is equals to appearance or disappearance 1 by moles d whatever will be the reactant or product divided by dt so always divide it with the moles why because we calculate for rate of reaction for one mole only so this is very important usually students get confused in this next we have next we have the simple formulas that we have this reaction so the rate law according to rate law rate is equals to k a raised to power x b raised to power y so x and y in equilibrium constant they, will, they we have written a a and b b that was because of raised to the power stoichiometric coefficient here we do not have raised to the power stoichiometric coefficient rather these are actually experimentally done so x plus y x plus y or all these forms together form the order of that reaction so x plus y is the order of that reaction it has nothing to do with this reaction you cannot find the order of reaction by just seeing that uh, reaction it depends on the slowest step right okay so now rate is equals to rate constant and for rate constant and the, uh, the x plus y is the order of reaction 
that I have written x and y is not equal to a or b. Nothing to do with a or b. Right? Next we have if x plus y is equal to 0, that is 0 order reaction, it is 1, then first order it is 2, then second order 3 is equal to third order. Okay? You have only these three orders of reaction in your syllabus. Okay? So now, how to calculate the, they, will, they can directly ask you what is the unit of rate constant, okay, they will give you the order of that reaction. For that we have this simple formula where n is the order of reaction more per liter, 1 by n second square, uh, second uh, per second, okay. So this is rate constant units, they, they can ask you these questions are directly asked in the exams, okay. Next we have the formulas of zero order, first order and second order reaction. For first order reaction, this is K represents the rate constant. This R0 represents the initial concentration and R represents the concentration at that time. Okay. So T is the time, right? So T half is the half time. That means where half of the concentration is uh, consumed and half is left. Okay. So for that R0 by 2K, they can also directly ask you uh, the half-life period of zero order reaction directly depends on the initial concentration. For first order reaction, it does not depend on the initial concentration. These type of question can also be asked directly from this chapter. Okay. So first order reaction K is equals to 2.303 log R0 by R. Then T half is equals to 0.693 divided by K. It does not depend on the concentration. Right. Only depends on the rate constant. Next we have second order Order reaction, uh, second order reaction. So this is the relation between rate constant and time and the concentration. For half life, we have one divided by initial concentration into k. So this is inversely proportional to the initial concentration, right? Okay. So next we have the Arrhenius constant and what is activation energy? This is A is Arrhenius constant and this E A is the activation energy. The formula. This is the rate constant. This is the direct formula, right? After this, calculate applying this formula for one particular temperature and other temperature T1 and T2 we had this that is log K2 by K1 is equals to Ea 2.303 R T minus T uh, T1 minus T2 T1 into T2 so you will be given two temperatures and you have to calculate the activation energy or something like that some terms will be missing here and this formula is also very important for your numericals so how was the class okay did you enjoy did you revise the formulas right so now what you have to do right just go through these formulas make a formula sheet and revise it as much as possible and also try to solve at least one to two questions based on these formulas and, and you are good to go right now we have for your j advanced preparation we have this uh, book for you that is rank accelerator book for physics chemistry and maths and beta, if you want to purchase it, you can purchase it. But if you get enrolled to Eklavya batch directly, this will be available to you totally free of cost. Now, what is this Eklavya batch? This is basically from JE mains to JE advanced. When you, uh, the gap between JE mains and JE advanced that you have to fill in this batch. Okay, understood? And this batch is entirely in English. So, that will be very easy for you. And don't make a fool of yourself by thinking that, okay, I'll prepare for JE advanced when I have cracked the JE, when I'll uh, give uh, JE attempt to, right? That will be a very false hope for you. Right, so start preparing for J advance as well from now only at least try to solve some questions based on it. Right, now guys we also have one crash course, uh, crash course for you where we are providing you board examination that is uh, your marathons, practice tests, everything is going on there. Right, plus after the board exam only because board exam we have just few days left. So if you're not even thinking about board exams then you must be thinking about JE means 2, right? Okay, so JE means 2 plus board exam both are provided here, right? If you only look for JE, JE means 2 and VIT triple E as well, that is for 2999, okay? And if you are looking for just JE means 2 and boards, that is for 2499. So now that is totally your choice. I would advise you to go for this particular thing because guys, just by getting 95% in boards, right? Okay, that is not... You're not going to achieve that much in life, okay? That means you're capable of so many things, right? But you're not getting into a good college. How come you will have a good placement, right? So these things matter a lot, right? Okay, good teachers, good college, good placements, at least good opportunities you will get in good college. So for that, you definitely need to crack a good a competitive exam for your engineering right okay so that's it for today thank you so much if you like this video share this and subscribe to the channel and do comment down if you are 
uh, like now feeling confident because we are we have completed organic inorganic and physical chemistry till then bye bye take care